papers. Morning scrappers. Laura, go back to your own. Go back to your own. Good girl. No, he left nothing behind. Now, have you finished scrapping? Do you have to put this back on again? Okay, good boy. Laura, you've got your own bowl to finish. Come on. No, that's not yours. Look at the mess. Oh. Go back to your own. Don't be greedy. Good morning and happy day one of Vlogmas. Like, how has it come around so fast? It's like five minutes since I did Vlogmas last year. It has been one heck of a roller coaster of a year. I must say I really love December. I've really loved December for the last couple of years. Since I've been, since I was doing the Irish dancing dresses, everything would sort of come to a finish at the end of November and then December is kind of like catching up, tidying up, relaxing a bit, getting back to my sewing machine and that's kind of what it's like in Beyond the Pink Door as well at the moment. It's like November is manic actually since June, actually since January of last year, <laughs> or January of this year, it's been absolutely manic. So I feel this is the first week of kind of normal. I can relax, I can, yeah, tidy up. Now you wouldn't think by looking at the house that I've done any tidying up because I've done little bits. But myself and Caroline spent yesterday doing um, stock taking and tidying of the website. So I have Caroline Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So today being Thursday, I'm all on my own. Well, I'm never actually on my own in this house, am I? Because there's always three dogs and two cats and tons of fabric couriers coming in and out. Um, I used to say I work from home, but now I think I just live at work. But you know what? <laughs> It's not the worst scenario, is it? I'm surrounded by lovely fabrics all day and I get to chat to lovely sewing people all day, whether it's Instagram, email, Zoom. Yeah, I think I'm living my best life, <laughs> definitely. So I'm here today in my uh, conservatory, which is kind of the cat's bedroom. And I'm wearing a new Nina Lee Southbank sweater dress because I've gone into sewing mode this week. I've spent three evenings yeah, three evenings in my sewing room. It has just been bliss and I've knocked out a few new South Banks because I'm currently doing like a tidy up of my wardrobe as well. I do this every December. So I just start, you know, sorting out the rail. It's chock-a-block. I'm a hoarder. There's stuff there from like 1982 and I am not joking you about that. <laughs> so I need to, I need to do this every year. It's kind of like I'm clearing my brain, clearing my mind, clearing the wardrobe, clearing the house. Uh, does anybody else do that? It's not like a December Christmas cleanup. It's just, it needs doing and this is the first chance I've got to do it. 
So yeah, I've gone through the wardrobe. I'm down to three Nina, Nina Lee Southbank sweater dresses and they are kind of like my staple uniform for December. So tights, boots, dresses. I'm cozy as I could be. This remarkably is my first cable knit one. I, um, through the clearing and the tidying this week, I found not quite a meter and a half of this was left on the roll. I was sorting everything into remnants and I thought, you know what, this could be an Andrea remnant. I think I could make this work. So with a bit of pattern Tetris, I managed to get the Nina Lee um, South Bank out of it. And there we go. It feels, it feels a bit short, even though it's the normal length. I never changed the pattern, but it's probably just the different fabric. Oh, but it's so cosy because it is just so cold at the moment. I just bought. I'm really cold. So yeah, day one of Advent. I've been so looking forward to this day arriving. I mean, we have Advent calendars opening worldwide today. It's just so, like you can tell I'm excited. I'm really excited. 500 and something Advent calendars out there in all corners of the world are being opened today. And this has been like our project since June. We've been working on these calendars since June. So it's just so, so good to know that they're out there, they're being opened, people are loving them. We've been particularly looking forward to day one being opened because we had our little button coaster last year. And I'll tell you something, it's really difficult having set the bar at that button coaster last year to find something like really cool and really different. And number one is the hardest little packet to fill. So I came up with the idea to have labels especially made for the shop. So I had a little chat with Victoria, who I love. I've never met her. I hope I'll meet her at some stage. Victoria from Little Rosy Cheeks uh, months ago. And I said to her, I really hope that we have enough quantity where you can make us, you can design us and you can make us a label, especially for us, especially for the advent calendars. And she says, well, what do you want on them? And I said to her, oh, well, I have a few ideas. I have a few things that I love. I love leopard print. I love flowers. I didn't give her colour specifically, but I did tell her, of course, that I love pink, I love bright colours, I like very childish colours, that's what I really, really like, I mean, I'm a child at heart. And uh, she said, well, what do you want written on it? So I had been speaking to one of my lovely customers on an email, and she'd sent me this really funny email. And she had said that she watches the live every Sunday and she watches with her husband. And uh, when the live is about to come on, her husband says to her, hello, <laughs> Gorgeous is coming back, or Gorgeous is ready on the live. And I was thinking, this is, that's, a, that's really funny. Because she said, you say gorgeous and lovely so much on the live. So all my fabrics are gorgeous, they're gorgeous, they're gorgeous. <laughs> so I said to Victoria, I think I need to put like, gorgeous onto the labels. So yeah, she loved that idea. And she came back to me with uh, a proof of what she'd come up with and I loved it. I really, really liked what she had done, uh, but we changed the colors on it because again, myself and Caroline were talking about the labels and everything. Caroline's really creative and she's a great one to bounce ideas off. And we came up with the idea of red and pink because I also love that combination. Even from Irish dancing dresses, I loved red and pink with a bit of white. So Victoria came up with, she really knocked it out of the park for our label. So these are the first item in the advent calendar. And yeah, this is an exciting, exciting day. Um, and there's our gorgeous label. So I can't believe that we've actually got a label that's been produced especially for us. I absolutely, I love it. <laughs> like so exciting. So hence, then we have these ordered for months. So when it came to having our custom boxes made for our Think Pink subscription box, I went with the same theme because I thought, well, why not? We love it. We absolutely love it. So yeah, I hope if you opened an advent calendar from us today that um, you love our labels as much as we do. And maybe this is a surprise to you that they were made especially for us. So these are going to be in like 
all of my clothes. <laughs> As Victoria gave me loads of extra ones, she really is the most lovely person to work with. So I have my cup of coffee and there's no sign of any animals around the place and I'm going to open my advent calendar because I've got an advent calendar this year. It was complete FOMO last year that I didn't have one. So I've actually got three. So I've got this one that I'm going to show you now. I have another little sweets one in the kitchen that I'm going to eat the sweets out of later because it's actually just too early to eat sweets yet. And I've got another advent calendar but it hasn't arrived yet because it's got stuck in the postal strikes. But I know that when it arrives it's going to be so worth the wait and I can't, I actually can't wait to open like a few packets out of it all in the one day so that's going to be great. I made Keris an advent calendar this year and I sent it to her in Scotland and I made Jason one and I sent it to him as well. I'm hoping that Keris's one will get delivered today. There's been such delays in shipping and couriers and post. Uh, possibly, mostly because of the Royal Mail strike, so the couriers are picking up all the slack and they're doing extra work. And also it's December, so it's like a busy period anyway. So yeah, she thinks it's going to be delivered today, so that'd be really nice timing. Uh, I don't know where Jason's one is. I'm sure it's going to arrive very soon as well. And I hope it does because I put loads of work into these advent calendars. I'm actually a really bad present buyer. Like, I'm really bad. I overthink it. I don't think of the obvious things to get people. I don't even pick up on the hints that people give me for presents. And then I panic buy and I'm never happy with what I buy. But I, I put loads of work into their advent calendars and I hope they're going to like them. I seem to have, I'm really sorry, I seem to have like stray hairs. But anyway, I got myself the advent calendar from the Historical Sampler Company. So it's a Whopper box, like it's huge. Um, this is the same company that I get my monthly cross stitch boxes from. So when I saw that they had an advent calendar, I just, I went for it. They have, they had two ways, that, I don't know if they've still got some for sale, I actually don't know, um, but they had two ways that you could buy it. You could buy just the box on its own, or you could buy a cross-stitch sew-along with the box. Now, I'm a go-big-or-go-home person, so I bought the whole lot. And this was even before I got my first subscription box for them, so I didn't really, I got so excited that I bought the whole lot. That's just what, that's what I do. Just bad. So in the meantime I've had two subscri subscription boxes from them and I can barely get the cross stitch done in the month. Barely. Now I've got this month's one done since the weekend so I'm like a week ahead but I couldn't start the sampler because I couldn't have two projects on the go or none of them were going to get done. So I did think about cancelling the subscription box and getting on with the sew along and then I thought no I will do this next year. So um, I don't know, is the sew along stuff, oh yeah, the sew along stuff is in here as well. So I'll show you that actually, because it looks really lovely. So this is the little kit. So the thread and the Ada cloth is in that. And then each month, no, for the last number of weeks, we were getting a PDF emailed to us. And the, the plan was to like um, stitch it in quarters. So do the first quarter, obviously, then get another email with the next PDF and then move on to and so forth. And I saw an email this morning, which was giving me my fourth piece. So I haven't even started it, but anyway. So I did actually print out the first one. So this is it, it's really pretty. It's quite a big cross stitch. So when I saw that, I just thought, do you know what, you're out of your depth here. It's not gonna get done. It's no point in even starting it at the moment when you've got other ones on the go, because I would like to sew as well. And I did find with the first cross stitch, I could either do that or I could sew a few things for myself self in the evening, but I just couldn't do it all. So yeah, so red tissue paper on top, a giant box opened and the number one is on top. I actually, I've, I've opened the box and I've looked through it but I hid it away under the couch in the living room and this morning I had to really think about where I'd actually put it. So it was covered in fluff and dog hair and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> but I cleaned it all off. And here's number one. And I haven't even, you know, I haven't even done the like feeling of the things. I've no idea what's in it. Cute little sticker. 
because you know what I'm like with stickers? I'm just gonna horse into it. Let's see what it is. I've no idea what's gonna be in these. Oh, they're so cute. Little decorations. How sweet are they? Oh, they're so cute. <laughs> so yeah, they'll go on the tree. I'm sure the cats will love them when they go on the tree. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get a big tree this year, as in, I don't know. I didn't even know if I was going to get a big tree last year, but it just arrived. So yeah, we'll go with the flow. I don't put up the tree until at least the 8th. That's generally, I mean, it's not a religious thing or anything like that. It's just generally, I can't look at it for too long. And also, I don't even have room for it at the moment. Plus, I need to move furniture. I need to clean. So I'm going to spend probably all of next week sort of cleaning and tidying and make room for the Christmas tree next weekend and uh, yeah so anyway that's my waffle it's gone on for far too long already this morning i'm going to crack on with my day and i will join you again later well my day is done and i've just eaten my dinner this evening i had a deja vu dinner from yesterday was a bacon and leek linguine and this was so nice so a few weeks ago i started getting the hello fresh boxes delivered and this is purely because um, for the last while, my cooking, my eating, everything's just gone out the window. It's been really bad because when I get busy at work, uh, so I sometimes forget to eat. And then I realise I'm starving if I go to the freezer and I get something from the freezer to eat. Or else I just nibble away or I get crisps and I eat a six pack of crisps. So... Um, yeah, I started getting the Hello Fresh boxes and I saw them on social media and they had a discount code. So I went with the discount code. Um, I got three, I got my three weeks of boxes and then I got another discount code. So I'm, I've got another three weeks of boxes and they're so nice. I haven't had one meal yet that I haven't liked and I haven't actually chosen any of the meals. I just get whatever they send me. They're easy to cook. Now, they were particularly easy to cook last week because Jason was here and they were just handed up to me on a plate. So, yeah, they are, I can't recommend them enough. They come with all the ingredients that you need to cook. So, I go with the three meals for two people. So, that's six meals for me. It's great. So, I literally cooked this one last night. It didn't take me long. It said it was a quick cook, 20 to 25 minutes. It was definitely that. I was eating it, I'd say within 25 minutes and then I popped it into the fridge and heat it up and I have it again this evening. So that was really, really handy because I don't like cooking. I love eating. Don't like cooking. No. So these are, yeah, these are really good. And because I'm on a discount, they're really, really reasonable at the moment, which is great. And it's just changing my habits. That's all I need. I'm in bad eating habits at the moment, bad cooking, as in non-cooking eating habits at the moment. So these are just going to like, you know, really change my routine. So I'm here joined by the three dogs. We have the Scrapster there in his collar. I have Angel in her bed, licking. I have three licking, licking dogs. And then I have Lola here on the chair. So there's always loads of company here. I washed Angel's bed over the last two days. So that's the cushion in a hard bed, uh, which I had to get from the shed today because I washed the like surround of it. Um, she was really upset that I had taken her bed today. So she loves her bed. She's very old. I noticed actually that I, well, I watched Vlogmas day one of last year, last night, to kind of get myself into the vibe of, you know, doing Vlogmas again. And I really noticed such a difference in the three dogs in the year. Now I have noticed over the last couple of months that they've got like older, haven't we all? And um, less energetic. Um, Scrappy finds it hard to get up in the chair there sometimes. Lola finds it hard to get up in the chair as well. She's on her heart tablets. She does get her tablets. She thinks they're sweets. She thinks she's special. <laughs> Angel's been at the vet lately and she's had a clean bill of health. She has a heart murmur which is normal with the Spaniels but not to the degree where she needs any medication. So she's really good. Um, yeah, and she looks cute, like, but she's gotten very, she's like she's uncoordinated. So she walks to go out the door in the morning and she walks to the wrong side of the door. And then as you saw in the video this morning, she actually just turned around and walked back into the kitchen this morning. And, you know, I had to encourage her to go out. I do talk to her even though she's deaf. 
Um, but yeah, she goes by the hand signal. So, you know, if I want to call her in, I just keep doing that and she, she knows to come in. Uh, there's Lola. <laughs> and then Scrappy. Why is Scrappy in a collar, you may ask? Well, Scrappy had a skin tag on his, like on his, I suppose, I suppose his shoulder. Um, and he licked it and licked it and licked it. Uh, so I brought him to the vet, got antibiotics, got a cream to like shrink it down and it was fine, it worked, it shrank, it was gone, it was great. Then I brought him to have his um, hair cut so he got groomed, he found it, he licked it again, made it bigger, back to the vets, more antibiotics, more cream. Um, they assessed him and just said he's too old for any sort of operation to remove it um, because he is 16. Yeah, he's 16 since June. Um, he's in flying form, but he, he is quite stiff. He is 16, he's old. So we got more cream anyway, and we healed it up again. And again, last June then, got his hair cut again, got a really short cut. And I brought the cone into the groomers because I thought, I don't want him to remember that it's there. So I said, but please, immediately after he's got groomed, put the cone on him and then we might be able to, you know, get around this licking again. I went in to collect him with no cone on it and on him and he was licked raw again. It's like, you just can't teach an old dog new tricks. Look at he knows what I'm talking about. So I brought him back to the vet about two weeks ago because he has it licked to it's it's huge again and uh, it's like a hernia. Is it like a hernia? No, I don't think I can't remember what they said. But anyway, it's it's quite big now. And there's really nothing that we can do about it. They gave me antibiotics again, which he loves taking, and I gave he got they gave me the same cream again and it doesn't seem to have done anything to it this time and they say that they're they can't think of anything else to do. So if anybody can think of something I can do. So just to give you a rundown. We have the cone, we have two different size cones. We've done the cream, he has a full wardrobe of t-shirts. So he loves t shirt loves t-shirt. But if I put the t-shirt on him and take the cone off him, he licks the wound through the t-shirt. So then he ends up with a big, wet, dirty t-shirt. Um, sometimes I put the t-shirt on him when he has the cone on because when he goes outside, he tends to kind of roll around and then he makes it raw. He has a coat, I put a coat on him. So I've tried like putting stuff on the fur, um, just suggestions that the vets gave me, like things that he mightn't like to taste of. Um, that didn't work, he just seems to love everything. <laughs> so I even met, um, I met a lady in the park one day when I was walking Lola and she looks after the rescue centre and I was telling her about Scrappy and I said to her, have you any suggestions? And uh, she, she gave me all the suggestions that I've tried and she said <laughs> he's just very strong-willed. So yeah, that's what he is. So just looks like he has to stay in a cone unless anybody has any other miracle suggestion for me. So that's the three doggies. You will see them over Vlogmas. Um, it was my mother's anniversary today. If you've watched my other two Vlogmases, you will know that. So my mother died 20 years ago today. Some days it feels like yesterday and then other days it feels like 20 years ago since I had a conversation with her last. So um, I went into Pretumna today um, and I got some I got some lovely pots for the grave and for my granny's grave as well. And I went up to the graveyard this evening before it got dark and I put the pots on the grave and a little chat with them both and then this gorgeous cat came through the grave graveyard straight over to me. I never met such a friendly cat. In fact, my two are not as friendly with me as this beautiful cat was with me. So gorgeous little ginger and white cat. Oh, she was adorable. She didn't let me pick her up and I rubbed her and she purred and oh my God, she was just beautiful. You could easily just bring her home, but I wouldn't because clearly somebody is going to miss her because she was just so gorgeous. Uh, I even FaceTimed Karis from outside the graveyard to show her <laughs> this lovely cat. <laughs> so she said, Mommy, you can't bring that cat home. And I said, no, 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 I'm not going to steal the beautiful cat. So I came home and I had my dinner and now I'm going to go to my sewing room and I'm going to finish a South Bank sweater dress that I started last night during a Wednesday Zoom. 
and I th think I just have to do the sewing around the cuff and sewing around the band and then it's done. So I'm really pleased with that and I'm hopefully, hopefully going to cut another one out before the next zoom starts. I have to change my overlocker into a different colour. So I'm going to do that. And yeah, I think that's from that's all from me today. Um, I have waffled on for a bit, so I don't want these vlogs to be too long. So I will see you all again uh, tomorrow.